Hey everyone, it's Misty, and I am doing a reboot of our Winter Pines throw pattern. We originally did it in these lovely blue batiks, but I'm excited to show you it in a kind of a fun retro Christmas line. So let me show you how to make it. So like I said, I was excited to try out this pattern using this beautiful, fun retro line. It's called Twas by Jill Howarth for Riley Blake Designs, and it's just adorable with the fun Santas and snowmen, and you can see how great it looks in the design behind me. So let me show you how to make it. You can pick up the pattern. It is called the Winter Pines Throw, and to make this quilt, you're going to need one package of 10 inch squares. You're also going to need two and a quarter yards of back Background, I just used white. You'll need a half yard for your inner border, which I use this cute stripe, and I also use this again on the binding. So if you wanna do that, you'll need an additional three quarters yard for the binding. So you'll need an accent fabric for the tree trunks. I use this strip of brown. That's basically all you're gonna need. So a quarter yard will be plenty. Um, the pattern also calls for, you can use the scraps out of your layer cake. So you can just decide which you want to do. I just really wanted those trunks to pop. You're also going to need three quarters of a yard for your outer border and three and three quarter yards for your backing using Using horizontal seams. So I just want to show you some of the adorable prints that are in this layer cake. We've got these little Santas. They're so jolly and happy and I just love the vintage feel of this. You can see the little sleigh with the reindeer traveling across the village and just some cute stripes. So many fun options. So you will have a hard time choosing which uh, prints you want to use for your trees but I'm going to go ahead and use these cute Santas. So let's start with the trees and I'll show you how we're gonna cut these. We're gonna use the large simple wedge template from us here at Missouri Star. And I like to lay it along this left side since I'm right-handed, this is the easiest way for me. And I just make sure that my template edge is lined up right along that outer edge of the fabric. And then I'm going to cut this long side first. And then I like to flip this back. If you have a rotating mat, that can be really handy. Otherwise, I like to just adjust my fabric. It's not a big deal. I've already made that cut so I know it's accurate. And then I'll just line it all up again. So I have it straight on this edge and this edge. And then now I have this folded back and out of the way so I don't have to run the risk of cutting into that fabric. And I can just cut across. And there is my first tree shape. And let me show you how you get a second one out of that same layer cake square. So you can see here's that first piece we cut out. We're just gonna shift this over now and it should have basically no waste and we can just cut this edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this since I'm right-handed. We'll just flip this around, line those two edges up just like before and make a cut. And so this is that scrap that you could use for your trunks and I would just use a different print on the trunk than I did on the tree. But I'm just gonna set these aside since I went with that accent fabric. And so these are how you'll go about making all of your print tree shapes. So now let's talk about the background shapes because we're using yardage so it is just a little bit different. I went ahead and cut a nine inch strip of my background fabric and I've got it folded here. So it's actually four layers and you can open this up and do it however you prefer. I like to keep it folded. So I'm just gonna line it up over here. Actually, I think just so I have less waste, I'm just gonna open it this much. There we go. And then I'll line this up, make sure I'm not cutting into my selvage edge. And to start with, I'll cut this side. And this is our waist. And then I'm gonna flip this around. So I'm cutting on the right side. And we'll just line this up again. And we will cut all the way down this strip, just alternating, flipping this back and forth. And we can just make one cut after the other and it goes super fast, just like so. There you go. And so now I'm just gonna set these aside. Let's talk about putting these together. All right, so now I have my background pieces cut and a variety of my print pieces ready to go. So let's talk about assembling our rows. 
every single row is gonna have seven of our print trees and then the background pieces in, begin, in between, excuse me, and it always starts and ends with the background piece. So I'm gonna grab one of these and one of these, and we are just going to place them so that they are you know, fitting together, and then we're going to lay them right sides together. And one part I do want to point out is they don't match up exactly on the end, there's just a slight overhang, and it's not very much in order to get that quarter inch, but it is a little bit on the top and bottom. And so now I'm gonna take these over to the machine, and we're gonna sew with our quarter inch seam, and we'll just keep adding one after the other. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press this back, just like so. And you can see how nicely that turned out with our quarter inch. It looks really good. And so now we'll just add a background again. So I like to just lay it out, make sure it's all lining up, and then flip it over and watch for that little bit of overhang. And like I said, it's less than you think it's gonna be. It's easy to shift it too far, and that's what kind of causes your rows to get a little wonky. All right, so I'm just gonna continue adding this until I have a complete row, and I'll meet you back here. All right, I have a row all complete with seven of my trees, so let's just give this last background piece a press. There we go. And now we can trim this off so we have nice square edges. So in order to do that, we are going to use our template, if I can remember the angles correctly. And we have this nice dashed line in the center. And we're gonna put this right against our stitch line, just like so. And then this is gonna give us our straight edge to cut. So I'm just gonna make sure that stays nice and straight. And we'll trim that off on one side and flip it around and do the other side as well. So because our angles are going differently, we need to flip this around. Just make sure it stays right on that seam. And then trim off square. Okay, so that is all done. Our row of trees is complete. And so now let's work on the trunks. Okay, to make our tree trunks, the size we're looking for is three and a quarter by one and a half inch rectangles. And remember, you can cut those out of those layer cake scraps, but I'm going to use my brown. And so I'm just gonna open this up. I went ahead and cut a strip at three and a quarter by the width of fabric. And so I'm just gonna lay this along my mat now. Make sure my fabric is nice and straight. And we will make our cuts. Just come over one and a half, and you can just go all the way down your strip to get a bunch ready. And remember, each row you're gonna need seven, so we'll just make one more cut, and we will have enough to finish off our row. But you would just keep going so that you have enough for your whole quilt. So I'll just stack these up. And then we're also gonna need to cut some background uh, pieces. So I have some three and a quarter inch background squares here. You'll need one on each end of your tree trunk row. And then you're also going to need some six and a quarter by three and a quarter inch rectangles that go in between all of your tree trunks. So let's go ahead and start assembling these now. I'm gonna start with that three and a quarter inch square and we're going to add one of our tree trunks to that. I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and straight along that edge. And we will just sew this down. Now you can go ahead and press this. I'm just gonna finger press this back and add my rectangle on the other side. And then I'll keep going until I have our whole row done. All right. So now we have our entire tree trunk row ready to go. 
So we are going to take this with our trees and line these up right sides together and sew all the way down. So let's go ahead and do that. And we've done the math for you, so everything should just match up nicely. If you want to, you can kind of finger press in your trees and your trunks and just pin those or match those up, but I, I just trust it. And if our trees are a little crooked, well, so is nature, so it's fine, right? So we're just gonna go with it. When you're sewing these together, just make sure you're not tugging on either one of them. Just let the fabric ease through the machine. We have our trunks added, so I can just give this a press. And our whole row is done. Flip that around so I can just roll these back. There we go. How cute are these? I love them so much. This is one of my favorite patterns to make at Christmas time. It literally looks adorable in any fabric. And I've even done it in solid brights and it's super cute that way too. You really just cannot go wrong. So let's talk about how this quilt goes together. So as you can see on the quilt behind me, we have six rows of these seven print trees. And in between we have a two and a half inch sashing strip to just give it some breathing room and space. And then we have that two and a half inch inner border and a four inch outer border and this cute throw finishes up at 57 by 73. I quilted it with jingle bells and I just think it turned out awesome. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time on At Home. Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching At Home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.